All right, what is going on guys? Today wanted to bring another video to you. Uh, this is gonna be on the Spyderco Tenacious, as you could tell by the title of the video. This is one of the knives that was definitely a pivoting point for me in terms of becoming more of a avid knife collector. This is probably one of, I'd say, three knives that really got me into knives. And this knife in particular got me into Spyderco knives as well. And I've fallen in love with Spyderco ever since. So I'll go ahead and post these specs on the screen right now. That way you guys can take a look at it. Just kind of a backstory to this knife. Growing up as a kid, I remember walking into Cabela's or Bass Pro and seeing all these knives with spiders on them. And obviously you would see them in the fancy glass displays and you just automatically knew that they were expensive knives. So, you know, I'd look at them, but I was never really interested because I'd see some of the prices on these things and they'd be 150 bucks, 200 bucks, 180. And, you know, as a kid, that's a lot of money. And I just, it never caught my attention. And I believe right after high school, I was at a Cabela's or a Bass Pro and I happened to walk through the, the glass displays and saw the spider again. And, you know, checked it out again, just glanced. And I remember walking through the aisles that they had with other cheaper versions of knives and I stumbled across this guy and what, what caught my attention the most was the price. Back then I think this knife was $59.99 and I'm talking probably back in 2014-ish. Looking at the prices online now, it looks like they haven't gone up too much. I think on Blade HQ, what I saw, uh, the most current price on this guy is $64.40. So it hasn't gone up too much. And it's literally the exact knife that I have right here. So yeah, after I bought this knife, it just kind of became this rabbit hole of getting interest or into more Spyderco knives. I think I say this a lot in my videos, but I really use my knives. They are tools, they are cutting tools. A lot of people obviously tend to stay away from prying using uh, knives as pry bars, and I agree with them, but should the time come where I need to use it to pry something out, this knife came to mind, and this knife, when I carried it, I would go ahead and pry stuff with it. I mean, it was 60 bucks when I bought it, you know, what am I gonna lose on a $60 knife? You know, I, if I broke the tip, then so be it. You know, obviously it wouldn't be covered under Spyderco's warranty, but at the same time, I'd only be out 60 bucks. So that was kind of my thought process with it. And I, I'll be honest, I pried a lot of stuff with this thing and this thing never broke. The tip on it never broke. It always stayed sharp. The serrations have stayed sharp as well. I haven't had to sharpen this thing yet. Um, the flat side of the blade, I will say, needs some sharpening, but other than that, this knife has been really amazing overall. And the great thing about this is for 60, 65 bucks, you know, it's a Spyderco and it's a well-made knife. I believe this one is made in China. I know the blade steel is in China, so I don't know if the knife itself is still made in the US or in Colorado, but nonetheless, cheap knife. I'll go ahead and start talking about the handle and the grips and then I'll move on to the blade. So first thing to notice is it's going to have a four-way reversible pocket clip, so you can choose to carry it tip down as it comes, or if you like to carry tip up, you can also do that. And it's ambidextrous too, so you can move the pocket clip to this side if you're a lefty. So grips are gonna be made out of G10. And this guy, I don't know if it'll be easy for you guys to tell or not, but has some pretty thick steel liners. And I think that's what contributes a lot of the weight in this knife. Overall, it is not a heavy knife, in my opinion, but when comparing it to a paramilitary two, it's, I think the paramilitary two is just 
slightly lighter than this. And again, when you look at the PM2, you can tell that the PM2 has integrated liners in their G10 grips versus this guy has G10 inlays over the steel inlays of the grip. So that's one thing to note. Uh, the pocket clip itself is pretty straightforward. It kind of has a traditional Spyderco clip. The only thing I will add that I noticed between this and my paramilitary two is obviously this one's going to be a smaller knife because is it because it is a mid-size carry knife. But I noticed that the spider itself is not engraved like it is in the PM2. This one just has a picture of it uh, on the clip. And the clip on the PM2 is just slightly bigger. This is a full-size knife, so you would expect it to be a little bit bigger. But same profile, and it, it's an amazing pocket clip. It, this pocket clip, or these Spyderco pocket clips don't tend to tear up my shorts or pants as much as some other knives in my collection and I love it. Uh, it's really comfortable, it doesn't get caught on too many things and I apologize it is really dirty. I'll most likely clean it after this video but yeah nonetheless the G10 grips are smooth. I, from what I can recall they were a little bit aggressive when I bought it new but Obviously as time goes by it's worn down and it's just not as aggressive as it used to be. But nonetheless I can still get a pretty good grip on it regardless. Uh, one thing I did want to mention on this grip, there is a big finger groove here. Which I kind of like, it kind of forces you to put your finger, your index finger lower on the knife to get a lower purchase up on the handle. But in doing so by moving your hand lower I think the ergonomics here fit my palm really well and it kind of fits my hand really good and then the thumb fits right on on the jimping of the blade so it it's a really good purchase on it it's comfortable it's not too crazy the clip does not get in the way and I can get a good purchase on it and then you do have some jimping on the frame lock, or the liner lock, I should say. And pretty strong, pretty, has some spring to it, which is really good. It's an audible sound, so you know that it's fully locked. I've never had any issues with this. Like I've said in my previous video of a ZT0, the liner lock does not stick on it. like that knife does. Really good to have that jimping there. Just that way you can get a better purchase of it when you're opening and closing the knife. So onto the blade. The blade itself is made out of C8R13MOV. So it's a pretty cheap blade steel. It's made in China. Nothing too crazy about it. But again guys, it is a Spyderco and it is made really well. Like I've said, this planage I've used plenty in a bunch of things and it's been pretty good overall. The coating on the blade has stuck on it pretty well. Uh, as you, I don't know if you guys can tell or not, but I do have some marks and some scratches on here from using it, but it has not scratched off the coating itself. So overall that coating is really good. Again, the serrations, guys, the serration on this thing is amazing. Um, I love serrated blades. And again, this was one of the first knives that really got me into knives. And, you know, anytime I see a blade with half serrated or a knife with a half serrated blade, I'm going to pick it up. I mean, it's just my go-to. It's always been my thing. Yeah, it's, it's aggressive if I ever need to cut zip ties or baling twine or anything that requires a bit more of a bite. I, I can always rely on serrations. Overall, I would highly recommend this Tenacious. 10 out of 10. It's a great knife, especially if you're getting into being a knife collector and carrying knives. And one thing I forgot to mention, guys, there is a lanyard hole here. It's just kind of small, so I completely forgot about it. But if you like carrying... Uh, lanyards on your knives you do have a place for it so 
Anyways, overall guys, I highly recommend this blade, this knife. Um, if you are looking for a better blade steel, Spyderco has a bunch of different options. Uh, there were two models that I saw on Blade HQ that caught my attention earlier, and that is the Tenacious in M4 steel, and they had another one in CPM S35V, or VN steel. And those are two really great blade steels. If you're looking for something around this type of style blade with better steel, that you, you definitely have options. I believe they also have a lightweight model too. So if this is a little bit heavy for you when you pick it up and check it out in person, keep in mind there is a lightweight version of it too. The lightweight version of it comes with a wire clip as well. So make sure to check that out. Another thing I wanted to mention guys on the blade is obviously the big spider hole here. Uh, I did not know how to spidey flick this when I bought it and it took, took a couple of tries to get it figured out but I figured it out pretty quick. Uh, the way I do it is, you know, I kind of look at it as a clock. Obviously the position down here is 6 o'clock, that's 12 o'clock. I always put my fingernail at the 11 o'clock and I always just push outwards and that's how I am able to flick this. Now I will say this thing isn't as smooth as a paramilitary 2 so it is a little stiff. It is a little bit harder for, for me to open it sometimes but when you get it right and after a while you will be able to flick it really fast and it won't stick on you. So Spidey Hole is amazing. I love it. It's uh, easy to open it with one hand for sure. The last thing I wanted to mention too was the jimping on the spine of this. So this is a pretty subtle jimping compared to the Paramilitary 2. As you can tell, the PM2 has more teeth than this guy, and the teeth on this guy are way more aggressive than the Tenacious. So I think the PM2 overall has a more aggressive everything, more aggressive grips, jimping in the back. It even has teeth on the back here that help with more a better purchase of your hand. Going back to different models, obviously if you're getting knives with better blade steel then you, you should expect to pay more for that uh, blade steel. So keep in mind once you do go start looking into knives that have different blade steels the price is going to change significantly. So keep that in mind. But anyways that's my take on this Tenacious. Highly recommend it guys if you're not a Spyderco fan. I would definitely at least give the Tenacious a try. That's what got me into Spyderco and that's why I love Spyderco today. And that's it. So thank you very much for watching guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave a comment down below. Let me know if you have a Tenacious. Let me know what you like, what you don't like about it. And let me know what model you have. I'm definitely interested in that. That's it. So I'll catch you guys on the next video and have a good one guys. Take care.